Hi, everyone. Assalamu alaikum, and peace and blessings of God on you. Um, my name is Khadija, and I'm going to be your MC for tonight. Thank you, thank you all for joining us um, at Visit My Mosque 2018. It's lovely to see such a diverse range of faces, um, and thank you all for kind of coming on this really cold evening. Um, just a few housekeeping announcements before we start. Um, so there's book, booklets which have more information on the program um, and the speakers um, just over there near the entrance. Um, so if you haven't got one, please help yourself. Uh, the fire exits are at the back um, and just over there. Um, there is a Salam Center stall at the back, although it looks a bit bare at the moment, so I'm hoping that by the end of it, there'll be something on it. Um, if you want to use the toilets, they're just over there on your left. Um, we'll be having a tour of the Salam Center at the end of the program, so please join us if you'd like to see the progress that we've made to date. Um, just a little bit about Visit My Mosque. Um, so it's been running for four years now, and um, it was set up by the Muslim Council of Britain, the MCB. Um, over 200 mosques are actually taking part this year. Um, and the Prime Minister, Jeremy Corbyn, and Boris Johnson are all making visits to mosques. Um, so it's, it's quite a big event, and, and it's, very, it's very nice to see all of you here um, joining us at our very local one. Um, so normally, um, we'd be asking you to switch off your phones, but we're actually hoping you will be tweeting about this event. Um, so the hashtag is hashtag SikkimVMM. Um, and the Twitter handles of the speakers will be presented on the screens, and they can be found in your booklets as well. Um, please feel free to take pictures. Um, we'll also be taking quite a lot of photos, um, so if you have any objections to being on social media, please let us know um, so we won't put your photo up. Um, okay, so we're now ready to get started. Um, it's quite a short program, um, and at the end, um, there'll be a chance to speak to us, um, have some tea, some samosas, which are always really good, um, and just, just have a chat with members of our community. Um, and you can feel free to ask us any questions that you want, um, either during the program or at the end. Um, so the first part of the program is the recitation of the Holy Quran. Uh, the Holy Quran is the Islamic holy book, um, and we believe that it was revealed to the Prophet over 1400 years ago. Um, until today, um, its recitation can be heard throughout the world, um, and it is reported that the first Imam, um, who was the Prophet's cousin, said, the, the Holy Quran is beautiful outwardly and is, deeply, is deep and profound inwardly. Um, its wonder is everlasting. Um, and amongst the people in our community, we're very fortunate to have Mariam Asarya um, to come recite some Quran for us, um, and she recites very beautifully. So please welcome her. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وأوفوا بأحد الله إذا عاهدتم ولا تنقضوا الأيمان بعد توكيد توكيدها وقد جعلتم الله عليكم كفيلا إن الله يعلم ما تفعلون يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين بالقسط شهداء لله ولو على أنفسكم أو, أو الوالدين والأقربين إن يكن غنيا أو فقيرا فالله أولى بهما فلا تتبعوا الحواء أن تعدلوا وإن تلوا أو تعرضوا فإن الله كان بما تعملون خبيرا وإن طائفتان من المؤمنين قتتلوا فأصلحوا بينهما 
فَإِنْ بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِي إِلَى أَمْ إِلَى أَمْرِ اللَّهِ إِنْ فَاءَتْ فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَقْسِطُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر أو ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقائل شعوبا وقبائل لتعرفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير صدق الله العلي العظيم Thank you very much, Mariam. That was very beautiful. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the formal part of the program is actually quite short. Um, and we have a few brief speeches by some of our community leaders focusing on giving back to the community. At Sikkim, we believe that community is the foundation and lifeblood of our societies. Not only is it vital in bringing people together and creating cohesion, but it acts as a vital force for good and social change. As such, we are very fortunate to have a diverse and experienced set of speakers to give us some of their insights into how communities can move forward given the challenging context that we live in. But before we start, we'd like to give you a little bit more information about Sikkim and the work that we do here. So please welcome a member of the Sikkim Executive Committee, Mikdad Versi, who will be speaking about the center. Firstly, thank you all very much for coming today. Um, it's a really Amazing to see so many of you here, uh, many of the councillors, the leader of the council, um, people who are the MPO, uh, Gareth Thomas was planning to come, but unfortunately wasn't able to, Naveen Shah, and many others, uh, local uh, interfaith and uh, faith leaders from, from across the, the, the borough. It's really great to see people come here and, and give us the opportunity to talk about what we do here uh, and for you to find out more about uh, our institution and the work that we do. Uh, I thought that... As part of this program, we thought it would be a great opportunity to just share some of the things that we do here so you can see what uh, mosques do, or what this mosque in particular does. Um, and we do run a range of regular programs all the time, every week, uh, from uh, our core programs, which include a, a Friday evening program, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, a Sunday school with about 80 to 100 young children, um, yoga classes, football, uh, and a range of other sort of supplication and, and prayer programs, which they place on Thursday evenings and, and, and on Saturday, or Sunday mornings, early in the morning, around 6.30, we have prayers, we have uh, a meeting about the Salam Center, the, the big project that we have uh, over here, and then we have uh, an understanding or description, um, a commentary on the Quran itself. Uh, but that's only our core programs. We do a lot of other things trying to work with the wider society. Uh, we work, for example, if you could go back to the previous slide, sorry. Uh, we, we work with many other communities, as you can see. We work with our, our, our local... The, the, in Harrow, there are about 25,000 Muslims. There are about four or five big, uh, big mosques. In Stanmore, you have a, a big mosque. In Harrow, or down the road, you have a very nice uh, mosque as well. And we work very closely with all the mosques in the area. We also work very closely with the local Christian and Jewish organizations, uh, the churches and synagogues, uh, in different ways. And we'll talk about more of them later. So you go to the next slide. The, the type of people we try and bring here to give talks on our Friday evening programs are really diverse. From across the world, we've had people who've come and spoken to us. If you go to the next slide, the, those cover a range of different topics, um, from, uh, from, which are trying to challenge us in, in the way we think. You go to the next slide. The, I mean, these are just, I, you know, the t it's just to give a, a, an idea of the types of different people who come from all these different ranges, whether it's academics, whether it's scholars, whether it's media and politicians, whether it's human rights activists, whether it's religious leaders in the UK. All, all of them, as well as diverse conferences, we have very, very different types of people who try and come here. Because we want to try and challenge ourselves to be the best that we can be as citizens, as Muslim citizens, as British citizens here in the country. But le lectures form one part of our history. We started here in the sort of 1970, uh, 1970s where we established our first Sunday school. It was one of the first Sunday schools in, in, in the area, uh, and now there are many others out there. 
Uh, we started our regular programs in the early 80s, uh, and we've all of our programs have been in English from a very, very early stage. And obviously that's really important because we want to ensure that whilst there are many in our community who are older and uh, perhaps don't understand English, what we recognize is the, that we want to be open for the future as well. And it needs to be something that is understandable regardless of your ethnic background. And therefore we chose English as the medium for all of our talks from a very, very early stage. Uh, we had a, a youth committee set up very early on because we wanted to recognize again that it's not just about the old generation who've done an amazing job in building this community up. It's also about the next generation of people who will be the leaders of the future and how, how can we do that by setting up a youth committee by ensuring young people are part of the decision making process from the early stages. Um, and we then started working very, very closely on how we can ensure that we don't just cater for ourselves, but cater for the wider society. And that's where we've had a whole load of other types of activities, whether it's health screenings, whether it's iftar for the homeless, which we set up, whether it's uh, working in new innovative ways to try and engage with wider society. And that's the kind of thing and the kind of community that we tried to become. If you go to the next screen, and, and that's one of the things that we've worked quite hard on in terms of working with other communities. We, every couple of months we have uh, grassroots interfaith partnership and meetings with, with um, uh, the local churches. Uh, we have a couple of the members there, David Tuck and, uh, and, uh, from, from the uh, St. Albans Church. Uh, and we, we work very closely, and with the, sorry, with the Methodist Church as well. Um, we also work with West London Homeless Church is concerned. Um, every year we provide volunteers uh, for, for homeless work, working with the local churches there. Every Ramadan in, in the month that we fast, we have we work and we encourage people to come and we have an iftar which is for everybody, open for everyone, and we do that quite regularly as well. And one of the one of the very um, closest to my heart in particular uh, events that we do, uh, and this was set up by by one one of the one of our, one of the uh, women in our community initially, was this idea of us going to the local St Albans Church for midnight mass. So for I think it's eight or nine years now, every year about between 30 and 50 of us, and it, it varies year on year, um, go to the local church for midnight mass. And, and that's been something that's been very close to my heart personally, but it's also something that I think that we really treasure and we really value. Um, and we, you know, we, we've tried to do different activities with our local communities in many different ways. You go to the next slide. Um, and those links are very, very powerful and very important. Uh, and we try and participate in many different ways because those links with our communities, actually, th th that's how we become part of our society. When we have those engagements, we, we know that some of the things that people say about us aren't true. M many people say the best way to get rid of any misconception is by knowing someone because you can just phone, up them, uh, phone them up and ask. If you go to the next slide. And so we have had a, also... Um, one of the things that we think is very important is we're a community which is a predominantly Shia community here. Um, but we think it's very important within, within the Muslim community to work very closely with our Sunni brothers and sisters in, in, in the local uh, community. We work very closely with Harrow Mosque in particular, but also with the Sri Lankan Muslim Cultural Center and Stanmore Mosque as well. And Stanmore is another Shia community. And so all together, when we work together, we feel that's the best way to move forward. Uh, and we've had, for example, 13 years in a row, um, the, the local Sunni community was using our premises when we didn't have this um, sort of um, makeshift site. 13 years that the community was using our, our facilities for, uh, for the Friday prayer. And that shows, and, and we, we have some members of the Haram Mosque there, uh, you know, and, and this, is, this, is very, this is something that's very close to us because when we work closely together with communities, that's how we become stronger as a society. If you go to the next slide. And what we want to do is not just help in, and work together, but also support. And we've supported a range of different initiatives, whether it's um, financially, whether it's through uh, manpower, through the work that we do and the volunteers we provide, or whether it's through an, a, another way. Because we wanted to try and support all of these different um, causes, because they're close to our heart. They, they're, they're aligned with our vision of, of being open and, 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 and supporting the work that we do. And, you to, and, and th that includes capital building and, and other projects which are like the Salam Center in other places. And not only locally, we also try and help internationally, although our focus has always been local. And later on, I'll talk to you a little bit more about the Salam Center itself, but 
which is our future and our vision for what we want to do in terms of engaging with the wider society. So hopefully that gives you a whistle-stop tour of the different things that we do here in our community. Uh, and, and I'm sure that if, uh, later on, if you have any questions, we can definitely talk through anything that might help. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mate Dad. Um, and just um, in case any of you want to join us for any of our programs, we do have a website, although I think it's been hacked into. Is it, is it up and running now? Oh, it's up and running, www.sikkim.org.uk. We also have a, a YouTube channel, um, Sikkim TV, um, and we'd be very happy for you to join us at any of our Friday programs or other activities. Um, so please let us know um, if you're interested in any of the stuff that we do. Um, so our first speaker for this evening is the Reverend David Tuck. Reverend Tuck has been a uh, sorry been in parish ministry for most of his working life, both in Norfolk and Greater London, um, and is very fortunate to have been able to continue this work since retiring in 2001. Sikkim has been carrying out interfaith work for a number of years, as you saw, um, but our interfaith work has really taken off since um, we met Reverend Tuck and the community at St Albans Church. And so we've, very, we've been very fortunate to have welcomed him to our centre a number of times over the past few years, and as ever again today. So please welcome Reverend David Tuck. Thank you. It's really, really good to be here again. Thank you. It's a wonderful initiative. I went, I, I'm going to share with you, for a few moments, two recent amazing experiences that I've had that relate to what I think is your theme for this year, giving to the community. Is that right? First, I've had the real privilege of serving on the panel of judges for the annual Muslim Awards for Excellence. It's a national competition, which has, I think, been in operation for at least eight years. And, of course, it is the initiative of the Muslim News and its editor produced here in Harrow. And I've been able to do this with Anila. We've been at it together. There are five of us on the judging panel, and I'm the only non-Muslim. It's been very fascinating to work with this group because we're very mixed, and we include an eminent West African, a French journalist, and a professor of Islamic studies from Wales. There have been well over 100 nominations in 14 categories, and I don't think I'm giving away any secrets when I say that I've been not only deeply impressed, but really, really humbled by the wonderful contribution that so many Muslims in Britain are making not only to the quality of life in the Muslim community, but more widely to the quality of life generally here in Great Britain. The 14 categories are very wide ranging, from medicine to sport, to community relations, and both men and women from all parts of life, all areas of life, and all parts of the country have been nominated. It isn't just the South East. We, the judges, have been given a glimpse of what the Muslim community are giving to our national life today. Make no mistake, Britain would be now greatly impoverished if Muslims were not here. To me, it's been a very bright light on what sometimes does seem to be quite a dark horizon. The award ceremony will be attended by many political and other national leaders. The Prime Minister was there a few years ago, and it would be really, really good if the media would share this good news as well. Ten days ago, Four of us from our local interfaith group here in North Harrow found ourselves at an interfaith evening on climate change at the St. John's Wood Synagogue. The title was From Global to Local. Much of we heard that we heard was, of course, only too familiar. The terrible threat that global warming presents to the whole of the human race. And most of all, of course, to some of the poorest communities around the world. Temperatures now approaching 50 degrees in some places, rising sea levels, which will wipe living space out in every continent, extreme weather conditions. We were reminded yet again of the urgency of the situation and what our government and other governments are doing in response. 
not enough, of course, anywhere. But the two main messages of the evening were, what can I do to make a difference? And what can we do together as faith communities? The four members of our North Harrow interfaith group present that evening have plenty to think about and plenty to work on. As Sheikh Mogra, another Deputy General Secretary of the Muslim Council of Great Britain, reminded us, care for God's world is at the heart of the Quran and of all the great faiths. What can we do here in Harrow now to give to the community and do it together? Thank you. Thank you very much, Reverend Tuck. Um, it's great to hear that um, faith groups are working together to tackle really difficult issues like climate change. And I'm going to go a bit off-piste here and say that we've been trying to go green for a number of years and been encouraging people to bring their own mugs um, to programs so that we don't have to use styrofoam cups or plastic cutlery. Um, and it would be really great um, if faith communities and non-faith communities, local communities, could work together to try and be the f kind of front runners in kind of reducing our plastic and styrofoam usage. So um, it's, really, it's really lovely to hear, uh, um, and I'm really glad to, to see that we're at the forefront of this. Um, next, we have uh, Reverend John Swabig. We feel very privileged to have welcomed him to our centre for various talks previously, including at last year's Visit My Mosque, Ramadan, and also for one of our main Friday programmes. Um, in which he talked about the parallels of Islam and Methodism in the 18th century. He is a minister of the Methodist Church and looks after the congregation there. Please welcome Reverend John Swabek. Salam alaikum. Thank you, Khadija. Um, after that build up, I'm not quite sure where to go. Um, the, the, the current uh, Methodist Church along the Penner Road was opened in 1957 and it uh, succeeded a building uh, which was constructed in 1927. So the old church became the hall, we added bits on. Gradually you, you acquire a suite of premises which initially were largely meant for church members, but over the years, more and more, we have uh, made these, these spaces available to a range of community groups. But it presents us with a bit of a, presents us with a, bit of a dilemma. Um, obviously, we've got to keep the roof on, so you know we make a, a modest charge for the, for the use of the for, for, of the premises. But how do you actually d change the relationship from being one of, as it were, landlord and lessee, into a partnership with people? Now that's the thing we've not yet managed to crack entirely. In some cases, we have. Um, and ideally, that's the sort of relationship we would like with all those groups. Um, because the, the call for community space for so many is really quite, quite high in this area. Um, and suburbia can be a bit anonymous, so the whole idea of trying to create community, I think, is really important. So that's a little conundrum for us, which we're working away at. You've got the potential with this extraordinary building, perhaps to do it in faster time because you'll be starting straight away from something new. Um, it's going to be quite astonishing uh, when it's completed, whenever that is. Uh, yeah, uh, and we've seen the progress of it uh, over the last couple of years as you gradually sort of, it's, it's, it's risen out of the basement, at least to where it is now. Um, but again, that, it will be the landmark building in this part of the borough, won't it? I mean, most people know North Harrow by the clock tower of Wheelstone Motors. It's not too brilliant, really, is it? Uh, but this, I think, will be architecturally something very, very significant. But it's not just about the architecture. It's, what, it's about what the architecture embodies and what you're trying to make of it, uh, yes, as a place for prayer and worship uh, and for uh, education for your own community. Um, and I know from your plans that you do want it to be a focal point for the community. And here it is, within a stone's throw of the main crossroads. So that's the thing I think you want to sort of you, you'll want to focus on is unlocking that potential to help create community and create 
partnerships. Um, it's been a great delight to me over the last few years that we've, uh, we meet, as uh, you've already mentioned, usually every couple of months, Methodists, Anglicans, and Mafil Ali. Um, and I think the levels of trust have built up in such a way that we now spend some of our time uh, reflecting on our sacred texts. We can do that, I think, with confidence uh, and with the sense that we can listen to one another. We discuss some of the activities that we're planning. Another bake-off due in May. The 5th of May, that's right, so uh, get ready for cakes in quantity. I mean, the number, of, the number of entrants we had last time nearly defeated the tasters because we thought we were going to get about 30. And what was it, 100 and, 108? 108. Um, and one of the tasters was diabetic, poor man. I don't know how he coped with it, but anyway, there we go. Um, but he, he survived. He survived. Um, and the, the sort of the, 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 a, a later development has been that we now actually can find time to pray together before we leave. Uh, and I think that is a very special time for all of us. Uh, and we can find, from our different perspectives, a way to come into the presence of God. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's lovely to hear about the interfaith activities and this building of community spaces that then means that we can come together on common ground. And I really like this idea of praying together um, and, and focusing on what we have in common. So thank you very much. Um, so next we'll be inviting Sonu Malkani to say a few words. Sonu was born in Mumbai and has lived here since uh, 1970. Um, she's worked in advertising, the media and in real estate. She's a veteran resident of Harrow and she's been here for the last 44 years. Um, and during this time, she's tirelessly volunteered, raising awareness on an inherited blood disorder called thalassemia, serving as vice chair of Harrow Carers and through contributions to the policing sector. She has chaired the Harrow Police and Community Consultative Group for a decade, also serving on the Racial Harassment Subcommittee, Domestic Violence Group, Multi-Agency Forum, Hate Crime Forum, Stop and Search Monitoring Group Network, and several other allied groups, so very impressive. Um, she's also Vice Chair of Harrow Interfaith and has a deep belief in the importance of, of keeping our hugely diverse communities harmonious and peaceful, making use of faith communities to deliver critical policing messages. This has resulted in helping make Harrow one of the safest boroughs to date. Last year, she also joined the board of Tell Mama, fighting all manner of discrimination and hate crime. So please welcome Sonu Mulkani. Thank you very much for that rather um, embarrassing <laughs> introduction, because I thought, who is this now? But anyway, it's very humbling uh, to stand here before all of you. So salam alaikum. And thank you for inviting us. Um, I was asked to say a few words about giving to the community. And you know, people tend to always think that giving is about money, funding, because that's the first thing that pops into people's mind. Um, I have written down a few things, which is quite odd for me. I like to talk ex tempo. But I thought if I did that, I'd be here all night, and you don't really want to be here all night. Um, I'll just read it out to you very quickly. Giving is living. Opening our hearts and minds helps us to expand and reach our true potential. It helps us as humans to connect with the divinity within. Let me just explain very simply. You and I are fortunate enough to be here this evening because these kind people have invited us to come along and see how much has been progress has been made at our Salaam Center. Yes, I said the word our Salaam Center on purpose because that's exactly what the trustees have been at pains to emphasize, that once it's up and running, uh, this will be a real asset for the whole community of Harrow. It's not just about the Muslim community or the Shias, it's for all of us. So therefore, we have a stake, everybody's got a stake in it. The Bible teaches us it's more blessed to give than to receive. This is what most of our religions do teach anyway. They encourage giving, because giving is about sharing, having compassion, taking care of others, and not being selfish, you have to think about somebody else. Giving helps us to connect and bond with people 
and makes us feel that we belong. Our own self-worth and self-esteem get a boost as we step up to give. It's all about sharing goals and aspirations and achieving whatever we do together. It's actually very simple. Every single one of us in this room is filled with, to the brim with the ability to give to our community. It's not just about money. Of course, that helps enormously when it's around. What, we, what is it that we can really give? Well, the sky's the limit. It's entirely up to you. The good Lord has showered so much on all of us. Just look around. Sun, the rain, the wind, the fresh air, all of this, all for free. No taxes required, no charge made. You know, it's all there. So therefore, I think if, if we're getting it like that, oh, never mind who the chancellor is, there are no taxes all the same. It's about unlocking your spirit and spontaneously contributing whatever you can. I think I've said this before, Gandhiji always said, you can always be a smile millionaire of nothing else. It costs you nothing, but to the receiver, it might just light up their world. You never know how somebody's feeling and it might want them to go on. Somebody might be depressed. We hear so much about people with you know, mental conditions. You just don't know what's, what's out there. Reach out to all the people around you. That's what giving is about. The quality and quantity of giving depends on your intention. The more altruistic and pure your intention, the better the results will be. Some of you are already quite big givers, sharing your time, your talent, giving up your precious energy, guiding people in the community, and giving respect, giving love, helping empower local citizens, perhaps helping them to learn English. I think that's a very big thing in this borough. We've got so many communities now who probably can't even speak English. And if we could help them, they would be able to access so many of the services and things which are already in place. It would be a very big help. This is the kind of giving which is sustainable, and sustainable indefinitely. It's not dependent on government policies, nor the economy, and very happily not even on Brexit. So, you are the master of how much or how little you may wish to give, which will help build a strong, healthy, harmonious community where everyone has the chance to thrive. What goes round comes round. Just give for the sake of giving, just do it anyway. Don't be stingy or hanker after the results, just do it. Giving is not a commercial deal. This is not something, you know, I'll do a deal with you and this is what's in it for me, what's in it for me. This what's in it for me has to go. What's in it for all of us? That's what's, what counts. Treating people as equals and making them feel valued is an invaluable gift. If you make everybody feel welcome and forget petty discrimination, it's quite a lot to ask because people are often stuck in their own way of thinking, but it's not beyond us if you may want to do that. Appeal to your higher self. Your soul will be nourished, your community will blossom. New ideas and innovations will take birth when you give off your best to help promote your community. You and I are enjoying the fruits of labor put in by so many who've gone before us. Somebody who planted trees, constructed beautiful parks, and built roads and schools for us. We're all, benef you know, we're all beneficiaries here, really, if you think about it. I believe that we should invest in our community, be inclusive, help enrich the life of all members of our community. Best thing of all, you'll find, not only will you have a great time giving, but life will unexpectedly give you far more back in return. Whether you want it or not, it just happens. It's the law of nature. Right now, I humbly urge you to please give your full support to help in whatever way possible to help our local police. I don't have to tell you what the cuts are going to be like and how many people are going to be worried about, all sorts of things. They're, few, they're facing huge challenges, but I know there are ways that we can help them bolster up the system in what, with whatever we've already got in hand. We have special constables, um, and there's one of them here. It's just gentleman here from Brent, and that's voluntary work. We really need to encourage our young people from all the various different ethnic communities to get involved. It's good for them to put on their CV and very good for character building as well. Plus, they'll feel they're part and parcel of the community in which they live. So, your capacity to give must outstrip your appetite for rewards. People often say, hmm, 
Am I going to get an award? Am I going to get a commendation? Am I going to get the Queen's, you know, she's going to recognise me in her birthday honours list? No, it's not about that. Just soldier on bravely, carrying on regardless of any obstacles you may meet. In fact, treat them as stepping stones to success. I believe service to man is the worship of God. So, may I please humbly ask you to get your skates on and get weaving. Thank you very much. It was very inspiring. And I think the focus on doing whatever you can um, and focusing on your community is really important. This idea that the smallest things can actually make a massive difference to people's lives. And I, don't, I think we don't realise it. And so thank you very much for, <coughs> excuse me, for reminding us. Um, so the next part of the programme um, relates to our current development works, which um, Sony talked about. Um, and the new centre called the Salam Centre, which I'm sure you've all kind of seen. It's, it's, it is gradually getting higher. Um, you've definitely seen the hoarding. The hoarding. Um, so we're in the process of developing this. And to tell us more about this, um, please welcome, I'm not sure if it's Nizar Morali, one of our trustees, or Megdad Versi. Nizar Morali. Please welcome Nizar Morali, one of our trustees. Um. My colleagues um, in faith um, and all other faiths. Um, Salam alaikum, peace be upon you all. Um, first of all, thank you so much. It's nice to see some old faces, uh, so much for attending this evening. And it makes us, as a local community here, feel great that we uh, are being respected, to say the least, by you guys attending this center. Uh, do invite us to your centers and we'll love to participate more in all other centers that you come from. So I'm a local general practitioner born in Mombasa, Kenya. And two things I miss about Mombasa. Number one, um, I remember with my grandfather as I walked down the road, whether it was Eid, the Muslim holiday, or the Diwali, the Hindu holiday, or Christmas we participated in all of those functions back home. And it was great. Having lived in this country 46, 47 years now, um, it, it, it hurt me to see how polarized we have become. And, and, and believe me, my contemporaries here, I mean, the younger ones like Khadija and Mikdad and others are next generation, but my generation contemporaries, some of us are here, and others, when we came here at the tender age of 18, 17, after having done our O-levels and A-levels to come and join the universities or whatever, um, we have been continuing to gather together, and we've asked ourselves, what can we contribute back to the society, this society that has nurtured us? And we feel that it is a project like this that we want to leave as a legacy. And it's the first of its kind as far as we know. Our research has shown that nowhere in the Western world any Muslim group has truly, <laughs> truly opened its doors to everybody. And that's what we want to do. We want to create a center that every neighbor, and I mean it, every neighboring household feels this to be as much as their center as it is mine and participate fully in it. So let me just take you through some of the current uh, um, uh, status. So these are the current trustees. Uh, believe me, um, OK, we'll, uh, we'll go. Somebody's in a hurry, but we'll carry on. <laughs> but we'll, we'll carry on. So uh, the, the, believe me, there's an economist there. There are f There's a pharmacist there. Uh, there's a uh, uh, finance director of a charitable organization. OK, this is the team that is working. And this is a team which has um, emanated from all parts of the world. Let's move on. This is the history of the organization in one very heavy slide. Um, this organization, and. And it, the, the origin of this organization, as I said, were young professionals who came really here at a very young age, but now, like myself, are grandparents. But the, our history in four to five simple lines is that we said 35 years ago that all the del deliberations in this center should be in English so that anybody from the locality can understand that. Okay? Um, 
Mind you, many mainstream organizations, Muslim and non-Muslims, have caught on with that. Number two, we have always said that women should be at the forefront of the decision making in the executive committee, just like men. No difference. 35 years ago, many, many other organizations have now caught on. Um, we have made sure that we empowered our youth. For the last, last five to seven years, 90% of the executive committee of this organization is below the age of 35. Last 15 years, we've worked diligently with the other Muslim organizations like the Harrow Mosque um, and with the local churches, as you heard, St. Albans and Methodists, etc., and the local synagogues to try and build a bridge. And we have been to your centers. You have come to our centers. Thank you very much. And, and by the way, not a single speaker has been to this center, whether it's on a religious occasion or other occasions. And every single Friday, every single Friday, religiously by and large, from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., we have a lecture here from anybody, man or woman, Muslim or non-Muslim, anybody who can give some words of wisdom. But every lecturer who has been here always is subjected to 15 minutes of questions and answers. Nobody's allowed to come off the chair, and I guess I will be subjected to that as well tonight, uh, come off the chair without being subjected to questions and answers. So this is just a flavor of the current quarter. Every Friday, we have those lectures. Um, I, I'll just leave the slide for one moment, although you have, I think you've got a copy of this in, in, in the brochure you have. So please participate. I would love you guys to be sitting here every Friday with me. And let's just listen, whoever it may be. You can suggest somebody else for the, for the following uh, quarter to say, look, guys, I know this person who will be wonderful for you guys to invite as well. So let's just carry on with that story. Next, next slide. Amongst our team, and these are, these are individuals who came to this country, believe me, in the late teens, are, are people like Ahmad Versi that we have heard about uh, uh, by uh, David Tuck. Uh, let's move on. Uh, we have Iqbal, one of my fellow trustees who was awarded a CBE. Uh, somebody's in a hurry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, he, um, so Iqbal actually um, um, has advised the Church of um, the Church, the Bank of England, uh, on Islamic finance. Um, um, uh, let's move on to the next slide. I've just been to um, to a, um, um, a commemoration of uh, Amir Karim there, one of my colleagues here, who unfortunately died about 40 days ago, um, and him and his son Mukhtar have been. A, uh, uh, ardent participants of this organization, and they've done wonderful work globally, and, uh, and this charity continues to do that. Um, and he, Mukhtar is part of this group as well. Next slide. Um, <laughs> Mikdad, I don't need to introduce you. You know him. Uh, he's everywhere. Um, uh, <laughs> well, I'm in, uh, I'm in the media. Okay. Uh, 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 next, next slide. Um, we have Asim, who, and we were amongst the founding um, partners um, in this project uh, the, of the Sufro Food Bank. Um, let's move on. So this is just some of the slides to show our relationship. Uh, we have colleagues from the Harrow Mosque who have been here. My colleagues from Harrow Mosque will, would vouch for me that whilst the Harrow Mosque was being built, we made sure that they were able to, uh, to utilize a space here for their needs, uh, including the Friday prayers. Okay, thank you. And, and, and the next slide will show our relationship with the local churches and the synagogues as well. Um, I, I really, I, I'm, I'm looking at... Uh, um, uh, Naveen Shah, and I'm looking at you as well. I really would like to, although I got lots of Hindu patients, some wonderful ones. This morning, uh, uh, this morning I, wo I walked, I walk every Sunday morning with my patients around Harrow Park, um, West Harrow Park, and I've got lots of lovely hin Hindu friends, but I need to penetrate into Hindu institutions, okay? And please, please pave way for me there. Okay, next, next slide. So this, this is, okay, so just one slide. So this is what the, uh, the old huts were. Those of you remember North Harrow Assembly Halls, uh, 1930s Nissan huts. Uh, when, when there was a leak from the roof, we dare not repair it because of the asbestos hazard. Um, so there was, there was no other option but to demolish them, really. Um, and, and so over the years, we made sure that we acquired those two houses at the top end on Canterbury Road and the two houses at the bottom end. Next slide. So we have this whole site. And uh, next slide. Um, so we demolished those two houses on the Canterbury Road uh, uh, facing, and the next slide. So these two houses will be demolished at the last part of the, uh, of the uh, project, if you like, uh, the fourth phase. Uh, currently, we are using half, uh, currently, we are using the left half, 39, for our own use. Uh, when there's an overflow, if there are more people here, we try and link them up where, where, with the facilities next door. And the other house we have rented for the moment just to continue with a bit of income. Um, and if you carry on. 
So this is what we want to build, as you know. Uh, it goes two floors below ground. Next, next slide. And we have just actually, literally just last month, got an approval by the planning committee uh, to change the facade slightly to mimic a little bit more like that. Next slide. Um, th this is the Prophet's um, uh, son-in-law, uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad's cousin, um, who had this fa famous line um, that really inspired us. Uh, and that's what we are working towards. Um, next line. As you all know, Harrow is religiously the second most. It used to be the first, uh, used to be the highest, uh, most diverse ward back in uh, when we started this project. Uh, but now it's the second, mo second most, I believe. Um, so we've got a wonderful group of people here. Um, uh, I'm made to believe uh, that there are 250 languages spoken in London. I'm sure at least 150 are spoken in Harrow. Let's, let's move on. So, uh, so the two floors of basement are ready, trust me. And, and you, you could actually walk in today and have a look. So the blue is this sports hall. It's sports England size, five-a-side football, four badminton court, um, basketball, netball, uh, volleyball, net cricket. You could play all of those activities there. Um, the green bit on the right is the plant area. Um, uh, all, all the equipment relating to heating and uh, ventilation. Um, the yellow is the uh, women's gym, um, and uh, the purple is the um, is the uh, women's changing area. When we when we actually carried out um, uh, an exercise uh, of. Uh, consultation and created focus groups to try and learn from Muslims and non-Muslims, men and women, 15 years ago as to what was required uh, within the community center. Believe me, uh, an exclusively women's gym came very much at uh, top as well, not only from the Muslims, but the non-Muslims as well. W women want privacy. That's why women have their own ward on the in the hospitals or um, the public toilets are men and women separately. And on the same basis, um, there is a need for a women's gym apparently. Um, so here we are, we are creating that, having listened to people. The, the, the purple on the top right is the lecture theater, just a 90-seater. So, so the group here, for example, we are less than, we are probably about 90 people. I don't know who has counted them. So this group will fit in into that lecture theater. So it's a standard lecture theater. We will have lectures. You can have a play. We can have a film show or whatever. Uh, that goes into the basement minus two as well. And, and the top left-hand side, the, uh, the green and the red, is, is a beauty parlor. So manicure, pedicure, men and women, uh, anything to earn. Money, yes, at the end of the day, the idea is to make the whole um, uh, center financially self-sustaining. That's very important, okay? And, uh, and, and I'll come to that slide in a moment. So let's move on to the next slide. So we are now rising one floor above. We are still below ground, we are minus one. So since the sports hall has, have, has to have a double height, um, so it's a mezzanine floor, if you like. So starting with the light blue on the, on the far right, uh, that's the men, men's gym. And the green next to it is a men's changing area. And then next to it is, is a feature staircase that goes all the way up and down. And then there's a little more extra plant room in yellow. And the orange is the kitchen. And, and the red is a, a sports studio. Um, so all of these areas that I, I uh, listed so far are physically present there that you can actually walk and, and look at those. Um, so by sports studio, I mean the yoga and the Zumba and the Pilates and whatever is on the Vogue today, okay, or, or when it's ready. Uh, and, and the slide above, so as you enter, so this is, the ground floor is the narrowest, if you like, and the uh, shortest. And the reason for that is that from the planning perspective, uh, we were uh, told that we have to maintain the footprint of the buildings that you demolish, uh, maintain the same size footprint. So this, if you like, the ground floor is the narrowest and the smallest. Uh, we saw the basement that goes street to fence, if you like, and goes full width. And the, and the floor above that also uh, overarches um, uh, the, the, the ground floor. So on the, on, on the, on the ground floor, we have uh, on the red area, which is the Muslim prayer, prayer area, uh, the blue being the men's uh, ablution area, and the, and the purple being the women's ablution area. And on the left, we have the restaurant, uh, and the lighter green is the cafeteria or, or coffee shop. Uh, if you move on. So um, uh, the floor above, we have another hall, which could be multifunctional hall. It could be uh, a conference hall. It could be a wedding a ba a banquet. Um, it, it could be for a variety of uh, functions. And then, and, and then the purple, if that's a color, uh, or brownish, if you like, are the classrooms that you can collapse and enlarge the hall, or you can extend the classes more. The, the purple in the front is a roof garden. Uh, I forgot to mention that on the ground floor, we have a garden 
outside, if you like, face, uh, touching the, the neighbor's fence, which, is, which we'll name the Garden of Contemplation. So it's the quiet garden. This is the, the youth garden on the first floor next to the youth center in yellow. And in, um, in, 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 the, in the blue, on the, the dark blue on the left is the library. The light blue is the IT room. Uh, and the pink room is a multi-faith. So we really mean what we say. Any other person who wants to say his or her prayers at the center, we have created a room for that purpose as well. Um, and the next slide up, is, is, is this is the only side on, on the Canterbury Road, the northern side, uh, where it goes one floor up, so it's ground plus two, uh, where we have a media room, and um, who will together, David, will create a local radio station, how about that, or a local television center to try and communicate with the community as a whole. Um, and and uh, um, uh, we, we have the admin and the, and, and the management space there. And if you move to the next slide, so this is the children's center, which is a standalone uh, children's center, um, uh, exactly where we are. So this, this uh, porter cabin goes, the two houses get demolished, and this is where the children's center goes, which will not have a basement, so it's ground, plus two floors, and if you move, so if you put a three-year-old, a 10-year-old, three to 10-year-old child, it's difficult to get him or her out of that place, believe me. Uh, just like I experienced with my grandchildren last weekend. Um, and if you move the slide above, when I went, took them to Topsy Turvey uh, in, in Brent Cross. Um, so slide above that, uh, after that. So this is just the same, uh, the list of all the facilities, um, and uh, we can move on to the next slide. Um, and uh, we can move on to the next slide. So just take you through the story of how it all started. So basement, um, believe me, uh, I learned more about construction in the last five years than I probably learned about medicine in the preceding 35 years. <laughs> but never, never understood how expensive and how complicated it can be as well. But, 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 but putting those pi piles, I mean, uh, all, concrete and steel, all the way down to the basement and eight meters beyond that, all around the perimeter, some 260 of them, and several in the middle, and some of the piles not being straight, and then needing to be correcting. Okay, I thought angioplasty was difficult enough, but uh, okay, uh, but I feel sorry for you guys. And, I mean, um, and then we have series of steel and concrete poured and concrete that is waterproof and membranes and sicker membranes, um, and the walls are nearly a meter. I mean, all of that obviously was making my heart burn because it was all costing money, okay? Uh, and can you imagine unearthing all that? If you move to the next slide, okay? There you are, so we are taking through the stages and then we make the staircase goes up, next slide, okay? And these pylons, as they were called, to hold the banks back were costing 8,000 pounds a week. And every time it rained, my heart rate went up because the contractor had the right to say, well, it's too rain, I, mean, I can't work. So there you are, 8,000 pounds extra per week. Uh, but thank God they're out, believe me, and I never want to see them again. <laughs> okay, let's move on. So this is what it looks like now. So this is, um, uh, this is what the basement looks like. So this is from the sports hall, looking at the mezzanine floor. Um, and the next slide. Um, this is a ground floor, so ground floor concreted, um, so you could actually walk on the ground floor and you can actually see where the prayer hall is, you can see where the restaurant is, and you can see where the entrance is. Um, as we walk, are, are we walking there? How much time do you, are, are, we, are, we, are we making a tour like that? Yeah, okay, very good. So, so, so and, and it's, it's uh, uh, flood lit, so there should be no problems. So some of the images, if you like. Uh, before you go there, uh, can I go back? The next. You see, un until you go and see that, you will not you'll not be able to appreciate, obviously, the enormity of the task or the work that has occurred. By the way, we have spent four and a half million pounds on construction. <coughs> Forget the land cost that all the houses that we bought before, all the planning uh, application fees, including every type of report you could think of, including a bat report. <coughs> Thank God they didn't ask for a butterfly report. Um, but, but I mean, every single from flood risk to travel plans to soil, um, et cetera. 750,000 pounds spent even before we got the planning permission. Okay, um, but, uh, but the next bit is easy. I mean, you'll agree with me. All you have to do now is just take those columns up, okay? Fill up, the, uh, cover them with concrete, put the roof, and put the facade and the envelope. And you have the, you have the building ready, except it's a shell. 
Huh? The, yeah? Okay. Let's, let's move on. See how I learned. So this is looking from the far end of the ground floor towards the entrance hall. So if you like, from the coffee shop towards the, ent towards the, towards the um, entrance uh, door. And you can see um, uh, on, the on the left is a, is a garden of contemplation. And, and, and all the neighbors, by the way, I mean, the house prices are going to rocket up here. Because the neighbors will be looking at a green wall. Okay? That's all, all, all that is a live green wall that the neighbors will be looking on, on, on that side. So... We have, we have made sure that we please them as best as we can. Next, next one. Um, this is as you enter you're, through the foyer, you're looking at a feature staircase across you, and there'll be a, a little reception in front of that. Uh, and beyond that is a garden of contemplation. Next slide. This is looking from the restaurant end towards the main entrance. These are Im uh, images, obviously, at the moment. And next slide. Um, this is what the, the prayer hall would look like, either this way, or, next one, carry on, carry on, So, or, or this type of finish. We are, we are still debating about that. Okay, next one, next one. This is the first floor, the mezzanine floor. Uh, just beyond that, you can probably see the, the roof garden. But uh, uh, next slide, much better picture. So this is the roof garden, uh, and on the right is a youth center. Next, next slide. The, the, needless to say, the building is very green in terms of uh, um, uh, environmental friendliness, and uh, we, we, we reach a good level of bream, uh, as, as it's called. So there's uh, solar panels, um, geothermal heat extraction. Um, we, we are still debating about um, so, um, um, utilizing rainwater, uh, etc. cetera. Um, carry on. Um, some of you were here, 2014, when we uh, had a symbolic uh, groundbreaking ceremony, and uh, um, uh, you can see the mayor of Harrow at the time. Uh, she's there. Okay, uh, carry on. Uh, carry on. Carry on. Carry on. Just move next few slides. So this is just symbolic uh, groundbreaking ceremony. Stop. Now, I'm getting tired. <laughs> I'm getting tired. Okay, this is true timeline. Huh? It's hard work. It's hard work. If I had the money, I could finish it by then. But the question is if. The question is if I had the money. Um, so we are trying hard. Let's look at the money slide, next one. So, the green is what's already collected. The red is desperately needed. The gray can wait. So, I, as I said, we collected, we bought all the land, the houses, we paid for the professional fees until we got planning permission. We had collected and spent four million pounds. We have collected and spent 4.5 million pounds so far in doing all the basement work. Okay, the indication is that we need 2.5 million in our bank to do the next stage. And we are working hard for that. So hitherto, the strategy has been, let's collect and spend, collect and spend. But there are pitfalls to that. The biggest pitfall is that more you wait, more costly it is. Yeah? The inflation in the construction industry is much higher. Um, so, so the strategy now is to try and borrow. So we've been talking to many banks and many institutions, and we are reasonably hopeful that we will have that, okay, pretty soon to try and move. So at the moment, we have taken a short break for about three months, four months, to try and get the money. If you've got the money in the bank, the contractor um, tries, and, uh, tries to price more competitively uh, than otherwise. Yeah? So if he's got the guarantee of seeing the visibility of the money there, th there's a b chance of a better pricing. Um, and, and the design team uh, are, are, are just, if you like, crossing the T's and uh, dotting the I's as far as the um, documentation for tender purposes is concerned, which is imminent. When I say imminent, about three months away. Um, so so we, 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 we have to work on that. So for that, we have also started a drive of collecting standing orders. So anybody, but anybody, 
can sacrifice their one uh, coffee a week from Costa. They would be very unhappy if they heard that. <laughs> so even 10 pounds a month, and I mean it, 10 pounds a month standing order is something that we say thank you very, very, very much to anybody who signs that. So there are people who have signed 10 pounds, there's people who have signed more. Today we have got more than 200 people who have signed standing orders and we have um, a revenue of about 20,000 pounds per month standing order. And if we can just double on that, we will have no problem financing that. And the intention is to keep on working on that, borrow and build and pay back, borrow, build and pay back. Guys, how can I stand here and not ask for money? It's become almost my habit. Yeah, it's become my habit. So no matter what, please, there are standing orders there. On your way out, just collect one, speak to your spouses. I know nobody does anything today without speaking to your spouses. I don't, okay? Speak to your children. Just sign something. At least what that would reflect to us is that we have partners in the community. We have partners in the community who are equally aspiring to see this center up and running. Whatever little you can. You can stop it yourself anytime. Just give us a try. If you find that you're not liking it, you can stop it. You just tell your bank and, 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 and cancel it for heaven's sake. But just do that to, show, to reflect to us uh, that we are all working for the common purpose. Sorry? Yes, give, yeah, absolutely. If you're a taxpayer, for him, uh, yeah, um, in parallel to the, to the standing order form, on the other side, we have a gift aid form as well. If you put your signature, the HMRC uh, would uh, uh, gladly, I suppose, can I use that word? Gladly contribute 25% uh, as well. Uh, the next slide. Um, the, the intention is to make the whole project financially self-sustaining. So all of those areas, these are not back of the envelope exercise. Believe me, we have had consultants involved as well to make sure um, to, to work it out for us based on the current market. Uh, all of those would be income generating. Um, we, 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 we estimate that the uh, cost of running the center will be about 400 to 500,000 pounds a year. I mean, it has to be run professionally. It has to be run um, just like any other um, um, center, um, um, be it a local, uh, um, be it a local um, shopping center, whatever. It, it cannot run on a voluntary basis. We will have to have a CEO, we'll have to have a caretaker, we'll have to have a finance director. It has to run professionally, and all the areas have, have to have uh, support staff as well. Um, but, but we feel that assuming at the end of the day we haven't borrowed heavily and there's no borrowing, we should be able to be um, uh, able to um, be self-funding. Self, uh, self Next slide. So, what do we need from you? I'll let you read. And final slide. Next one. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Nazar and Cole. Um, so that is actually the end of our program. Um, oh, sorry, actually, um, we also have um, Councillor um, Sachin Shah, um, and I don't know if you want to come up and say a few words. I know it's, it's ad hoc, but we would be delighted if you'd come and say a few words. Thank you. Uh, I won't try and adjust this. Um, I've seen lots of people struggle. Uh, very much. Um, thank you very much. I'm Councillor Sachin Shah, I'm the leader of Harrow Council. Um, I'm not going to ask you for money, um, uh, so um, and wait until you get your council tax bills. Then, uh, the, the, uh, then I then I'm certainly asking you for money. But can I think? I just want to say how wonderful it is to be able to stand in front of this. Uh, that will be absolutely fantastic. And that will be a credit to the London Bar of Harrow when that's built. And um, I want to congratulate everyone that's, that's been involved in that because that, that will look fantastic. Um, one thing we all know about politicians, um, we like playing with statistics. So that comment about Hackney being the most diverse borough, let's ignore that for a second. Harrow is the most diverse borough in, in this country. That's what I keep telling people. I still think that's true. Um, and, and you know what? I love my job 
because we are the most diverse borough and it allows me to go and and talk to so many groups i do the, the thing that i love about my job is i get to come and speak to all our community groups across harrow um and that's what makes harrow special when i tell people about harrow i don't say it's a place i say it's a community and it's a mixture of communities and today is an example of exactly why i can say that uh, because uh, visit my mosque day, uh, it's my second mosque today, I've, I've been to every single mosque in Harrow, um, and every single one of them is a credit to our community, all our community groups, the churches that we've got here today, the temples, the synagogues, all of them make up what is Harrow, um, and and the community, the community spirit we've got there, and the community spirit that will get us um, this Salam Centre built, and I'm really looking for the, forward to the tour in a couple of minutes' time, um, will, um, will really be a credit to the borough. So I want to say, on behalf of Harrow Council, can I congratulate you for where you've gone? Can I say how wonderful it is to be able to be here? Um, I just want to make a comment about the number of councillors in the room, because councillors are here... Not, um, not just to sit, we're here to serve you um, and, and therefore it is really important that you know they're here because um, they will be the ones that get your bins picked up if you've missed them. So I'll, I'll, start, I'll, I'll start at this end. Uh, uh, John, John Hinckley um, is there. Say hello, John. Hello. G Jean Laminen is there. Just slightly behind Jean is Gazumfa Ali. Simon Brown, um, Simon Brown, who is um, also the, um, the councillor for this area. We are in Headstone South, aren't we? we are yeah, also the councillor for this area. Navin Shah, a great friend to Harrow's community, someone that's been leader of the council before, London Assembly member for Brent and Harrow, making sure Harrow gets a great deal. Navin Shah, a great friend of Harrow and a resident, someone that's been with the communities for a long time. Sassi Suresh, um, also uh, a local councillor for this area. Uh, Rekha Shah, um, councillor for Wheelstone, is that, and uh, Manji, Manji Kara. Um, uh, Karima, there we are, sorry, yes, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, Karima Marika. Um, I think that is all the councillors. Look, we are here to support you. Um, so on behalf of our council, as a leader of the council, can I thank you for inviting me, but please be, do speak to all the councillors to see what we can do to help you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, and thanks for introducing all the councillors to us as well. Um, thank you all so much for attending. It's been such a wonderful evening, and I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have as well. Um, it's so great to see such a wide range of people here, and I hope that um, this will inspire you to come to join us on our programmes, and I hope that we can join you on any programmes that you have as well. Um, there will be a tour of the Salam Centre site, um, and if you want to join, join us, you can. Uh, or if you prefer to stay here in the warmth, you can stay here. We'll be serving tea, uh, some mesas and some biscuits. So please uh, stick around. Um, have a chat with um, any of us. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. Um, and thank you so much for joining us. It's, it's really wonderful to see so many people. And um, it's really heartwarming. So thank you very much.